I can tell you that fundamentally, there's no difference between them and us. All right. Um, there's one Hadzabe person that actually went to university and he came back to visit camp because he feels more comfortable there while I was there. And he speaks, uh, the same way he speak, he, he can speak English and mm -hmm. his way of thinking about the world is the same as yours and mine. But that's not necessarily so of those that are, are, are living in the bush themselves. So fundamentally, genetically, uh, how, however you want to gauge it, they're as human as you and I, but mm -hmm. their way of thinking about the world is very fundamentally different, right? If you think about, uh, us today, in our tradition, the whole idea is that human beings have dominion over the rest of life on the planet, right? There's something fundamentally different, something special about us. Yeah. They don't think that way. They think of themselves as just a part of the larger community of life that surrounds them. And I remember, you know, I was doing research for this, this, this book I've just written, Evolution's Bite. Mm -hmm. And I, I sat around with a group of hunters and then a group of, of women and a, then a, a group of elders. And I said to all of them, I said, Hey, you know, trying to, trying to get a sense of, 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 of their perceptions of humanity and what makes us different and unique. I said, what makes us different? You know, and if you ask that to a group of people in our culture, they would say, Oh, you know, art. Language, um, empathy, uh, they would come up with a, a variety of things that we typically associate with humanity. They were perplexed by the question. Okay. They basically, they had no idea. You know, they just said, um, you know, one, one woman said, uh, we walk on two legs. Another one <laughs> said, we're not as hairy as the other animals. Uh, but they don't have that fundamental contrast, that disconnect. They are a part of nature, not a part from nature, which is what we are. And, you know, I came to realize that, hey, you know, this whole thing about organized religions and things of that nature um, and, and their development, this is all part of, part and parcel to, I should say, the agricultural revolution. Mm -hmm. So that was something that I found really, really fascinating. I mean, I went one step further and I said to them, you know, I was trying to understand uh, their perception of what makes us different. And so I said, you know what, what is, uh, how, how did we get here? How come people are sitting here living in these huts and speaking and making fire and hunting other animals? Uh, what makes us different? And I, basically I asked them, what is their creation story? And they told me this wonderful story. Um, they don't have the same um, developed religion that we have, mm -hmm. they do have some inanimate, uh, it's, it's basically an animistic, if you want to call it religion. Right. Um, they, they, they have this concept of uh, the sun and the moon, and Ishiko is the sun, and apparently the story, as the story goes, there were a group of baboons, and Ishiko uh, split them in half, split them in two subgroups, and said to one group, you go fetch water, and the other group, you go fetch food, and then bring them back, and we'll all meet, and we'll share. The one, the group that was set out to get food, they all went out, and they dutifully collected uh, fruits and uh, roots and tubers and things of that nature, and brought them back to a common place. But the ones that had been sent to get water, they never returned. Yeah. Shiko, they were, Shiko was not omniscient. They didn't know what was going on. So she went out to look for those other baboons and she eventually found them and they were just playing in the water, having a gay old time. So Ashiko called them back, got them together with the original group that had been split off for food collection and said to the, said to those that had collected the food, because you listened to me, because you got the food and brought it back to share. I will turn you into the Hadzabe. And those of you who are left to get water, you will become the Hadzabe's favorite prey and remain baboons. Oh. So that's, there's, there's a lot to unpack in that story. It right. shows just how important sharing is to the Hadza as a people. 
um, and it's what makes them human. Uh, and, uh, and it's also a lot about their connection to the natural world. Right. Yeah. You can learn a lot about a, um, a society or culture from their creation story, right? That's right. And to be honest with you, I don't think that's ever been written up except in my book. <laughs> really? It's been recorded. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, then that's really important too. That's an important work that you've done there as well. Mm-hmm. 